What's up, sports fans, and welcome to the Sports Opinions Podcast. NFL picks against the spread for week number 11. I am your host, as always, Alex Cuesta. Normally with me is Wally the Million Lira Man, but he cannot be with me today. He had other obligations, but that is okay. Done this solo before. We'll do it solo again, and hopefully the Million Lira Man will be back with us next week. But just to bring you guys current, keep you up to date with what the Million Lira Man is doing, if you haven't been following him on Twitter at Million Lira Man, I don't know what you're doing if you're a gambler, if you're listening to this. If you want to win some money... This is the guy to go to. Since November 40th, the 30 days before that, in the NFL, he's 17-7-2. That's 71% correct. NCAA football, 14-5-1. That's 74%. NBA, 25-7-1. That's 78%. And college basketball, 8-7, 53%. You're nuts if you're not following him. One day passes are $35. Three days, $65. Seven days, one forty-five. It's an absolute bargain if you want to win money. You spend that money, you'll make a lot. Definitely go follow him. I think in the days prior, he's lost once, uh, twice out of, what is that, eight picks right there. So you really are not smart. Again, at Million Lira Man on Twitter and find him, uh, shoot him an email. DM him, email millionlearman at gmail.com. So you'll be nuts not to do that. As always, what we do here is I'll go over our picks from last week first, and then I will roll through with what we have going on this week. I'll start off with Wally. Unfortunately for the Million Lira Man, the picks here did not go his way. Some upsets, some shocks. We actually agreed on, let me see, we agreed on one there too, but I'll go over the ones we did and the one we didn't agree on first for him. Um, He had the Eagles minus 6.5 against the Cowboys. Unfortunately for him, the Cowboys decided to play a football game. And they ended up winning 27-20. So that's an 0 for there. He's starting off 0-1. And And then we both agreed on these two games. First one, New England at Tennessee. We both thought New England was going to handle the Titans. We thought that the Titans scoring against the Cowboys, that offense has been lethargic all year. We thought the Cowboys game was an aberration. Apparently it wasn't. Titans at home kicked the Pats' ass to the tune of 34 to 10. Both of us ended up getting an X in that column because I agree that New England was favored minus six and a half. We both thought that was low. Ended up we were both wrong. So again, he's there 0 and 2. I'm 0 and 1. Then we had the Jets game where I don't know why either of us thought that the Jets were going to do anything good. Josh McCown was there instead of Sam Darnold. But we forgot that Todd Bowles was still the head coach and Jeremy Bates was still the offensive coordinator. And the game was absolutely pathetic. The Bills came into MetLife, whooped up on the Jets 41-10. to The Jets were favored minus 6.5. We both took the Jets there. We were both fools. And Million Lira Man finished off 0-3. That brings his record to 17-13-2 on the year. Again, the picks that he makes on this uh, podcast aren't always the ones that he bets. During the week, he normally will place those bets in, but he also has others going in, so don't take what he's doing here completely against his record. But last week was 0-3. He still has a very good record. 17-13-2 is very good when you're given three three picks a pop every week. So don't hold him against that too well. He'll pick it back up next week. He'll have some good locks. As for me, obviously, I lost New England and the Jets as well, but I did have a winner. I chose the Chargers minus nine and a half to go into Oakland and beat them by more than that, by about 10 points. And that they did. They won 20 to six and the Chargers just keep on rolling. That's a really good team. Oakland is reeling. Thought they were going to be better. They're absolutely terrible. I will say it every week. They're probably the biggest disappointment of the year. So that's a win for me. Chargers get that win there. And then I had a push. I had Indy defending home turf, minus three against Jacksonville, and they did end up winning the game. Andrew Luck is starting to heat up really well this year. His comeback year is good. The rest of the team around him is bad. But they ended up winning 29-26. It was minus three, so it's a push. But I'll take a push. A push isn't a bad thing. So I ended up going 1-2-1 and one on the week. And my overall record is 16-24-1. and one. Mine's higher because I pick the Jets game every week. So that's why mine's a little bit higher than Wally's there. Jumping into week 11, we both have our picks locked. 
but we're going to go over the big games of the week like I always do. For you degenerate gamblers who bet on every single game, every single week, this one's for you. Um, let's jump in into it right away. First big game, Houston is favored going into Washington, minus three, the Texans. I really like the Texans. I know it's tough to go into somebody's home turf, but if I was going to be a betting man, Deshaun Watson has it going on. He's passing a DeAndre Hopkins. He has uh, Demarius Thomas there now. That's a good football team. Lamar Miller's running the ball well. That's a really good football team, and that defense is pretty damn good as well. J.J. Watt is playing like J.J. Watt, and they're just in a really, really good place right now. So... If I were to bet that game, I would go Houston going into Washington. Washington has a very good defense, but they don't score the football. And on the polar opposite of that, Texans have a very good defense, and they score the football. So just based off that, I would say you'd have to go Houston if you were going to bet that game. Minus three is a good bet because there's a chance you also get a push out of that. So I would go Houston there. Second big game. Minnesota at Chicago, minus two and a half. Chicago is the favorite there. This one's tough. They're giving Mitch Trubitsky a lot of credit for how he's been playing. The Chicago defense has had a lot of unsung heroes, guys that aren't household names, doing some big things. I wouldn't touch this game with the 10-foot pole. Uh, people are riding high on Mitch Trubitsky, and I get it. He's playing very well. He's looking like the number one pick that they grabbed him as. But all it takes is one week to stumble. And when the line is like this at minus two and a half, as the home guys, I'm not touching that. I wouldn't pick this game at all. If you were going to put a gun to my head, I would go with the hot hand. I would go with Chicago and take that minus two and a half. Probably pull a Wally and buy it up to three. You'll be proud of me for that one, Wall. But probably buy it up to three. And... I would pick Chicago, but again, I would probably avoid that game in general. Final big game is the big game of the year. It is the Super Bowl before the Super Bowl actually happens right now. This is a battle of 9-1 and one teams Monday night. Supposed to be in Mexico City. Moved to Los Angeles, which is pretty mind-boggling considering Mexico City's fuel conditions are terrible. But Los Angeles and the state of California are engulfed in absolutely terrible wildfires. This past week... People couldn't breathe in L.A., so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Hopefully the wildfires are mostly contained and the smoke is not really ventilating down there, but who knows. But it got moved to L.A. because the field conditions at Azteca, the famous Mexico uh, soccer field in Mexico City, apparently are abysmal and guys would get hurt. NFL needs to continue to, pr- to pretend like they care about player safety, so they moved it up to L.A., This line right here has the Rams favored minus three and a half. I've been riding the Rams wave all day long, but you can't discount Kansas City and Patty Mahomes. This is one of those games where if you're a true degenerate, you're going to bet this game. You're going to bet this game if you're a true degenerate because it's a huge game and you got to throw a bet in. I'd bet the home team. I think the Rams are going to win this game. I like the Rams in this game. I like the makeup of the Rams. I like the offense. I like the defense. I like everything that they do. And I really like... I think the Rams are going to come away with this one at home. And I think it might be by six, seven points. I don't think it's just going to be a field goal. So that's why I would go with the Rams. But this one's tough to bet because both teams are so good. And we could literally be looking at a potential Super Bowl matchup. I know a lot of people are saying... Uh, Chiefs are going to falter because of the Chiefs' history, but the way they're playing right now, it's tough to doubt them. And that's who I'd go with right there. So big games are in the books. We're now going to move on to mine and Wally's locks of the week. Jumping first right away to Wally's. He is picking the Falcons minus 3.5 at the Cowboys. And if I know Wally at all, He's going to buy that Falcons number down to three. So more than likely, you're looking at a Falcons minus three. And I I can tell you that he probably likes this game just because you don't know what Cowboys team you're going to get. Falcons are home. They're in a dome. They're pretty damn healthy. This is a good one to like. You can bet that the Cowboys are probably going to stumble. Because they have done that all year. They can't sustain winning streaks. They're not as 
good as advertised, especially on the road. And Matty Ice in a dome, Julio Jones, uh, Tevin Coleman, all those guys, they're going to run amok. And I can agree with him, minus three and a half. Buy it down to three. If I'm putting my wallet cap on, that's probably what you're going to do there. His next pick is one that I'm not a massive fan of, but I can see the trend that he's going in. The Titans have scored 28 points and 34 points the last two weeks. They are heading into Indianapolis, a division rival. They are plus one and a half, and he's taking that one and a half. He thinks the Titans are going to win outright, and I can see where he's coming from. I personally wouldn't bet against Andrew Luck at home, but Wally has a great track record doing this. He sees the trends. I wouldn't doubt the man. Titans have been scoring. That defense is good. Mariota looks good. And he's rolling with the hot hand. I can't doubt him here. I don't doubt the million lira man. There's a reason why he wins so many people so much money. His final pick, he has the Raiders at Cardinals. Cardinals are minus five. This is the battle of the bad. But I got to side with him here. The Cardinals probably aren't as bad as the Raiders right now. I personally think my Jets are the worst team in football right now. But a close second is probably the Raiders. Right, the best thing John Gruden right now could do would be to sit um, Derek Carr down. Don't get him hurt if you really believe in the kid. And the Cardinals, Josh Rosen, he's going to throw the ball around the yard. He's a young kid. They, have, they still have a really good running back behind them in David Johnson. And Larry Fitzgerald can still do his thing. So I do like this. Again, putting on my Wally cap, good chance he buys it up to minus six just to, you know, Save that push opportunity there. I don't know if that's exactly what he wants to do, but I'm going to give him that handicap that there's the potential that he wanted to do that. So that's what I'm going to run with for him. So those are Wally's picks. Let me go over them for you again. He has Falcons minus three and a half. I'm going to say he buys that down to three. He has Titans plus one and a half, and then he has Cardinals minus five. I'm going to say he buys it up to minus six. Those are Wally's picks. We're going to jump right into mine right away. My locks here... I like Pittsburgh minus five heading into Jacksonville. Jacksonville has regressed back to the mean. They're the team that everyone really thought they were. They're a defensive team that's not playing great defense. And their offense has Blake Bortles. Boat is not very good right now. Sorry, Barstool guys. Boat isn't very good. Whoever the hell else they put back there isn't very good. They're just not playing good football. And Pittsburgh put on a clinic. Scored 52 points this past Thursday. I don't see them slowing down. Now that the Le'Veon Bell saga is effectively over, he's not going to play this year. He never reported. That is a monkey off that team's back. And I think they're just going to play loose. They're just going to play free. And you're going to see Pittsburgh walk into Jacksonville with something to prove. James Conner has something to prove all year. And he's been proving it. I think he's going to continue to prove it. They're going to walk into Florida. Pittsburgh is minus five. I think that's low. Jacksonville is not going to be able to stop him. I like Pitt there. Next game I like, Denver at the Chargers in LA. Chargers are minus 7. Denver's really bad. Chargers really good. Minus 7, really low. I picked the Chargers a lot this year, I think. I like the Chargers. They are a team that scores points. I've liked Phillip Rivers his whole entire career. I think he's one of the most underrated quarterbacks. Uh... And he's really going to get that one of the best to never win a Super Bowl if he doesn't do it. But this team might be the best chance that he's had. This is a really good team. They're 7-2 and right now. They're doing better than they ever had to start a season. And they're a end-of-the-year type of team. They usually start off mediocre, come on strong. So this is a real opportunity for Phillip Rivers. I like them minus 7 at home against a Denver team that's reeling and trying to figure out if they still can play football. Last pick here. Sorry, Miguel. Sorry, Kyle. Sorry, Melissa. Sorry, John. I'm picking New Orleans minus eight. Defending home turf against the defending champion Eagles. The Eagles are just not doing what you know what they were supposed to do. The defense is not as dominant as it was. Their vaunted nine eight man rotation on the line is just not there. And New Orleans is rolling. New Orleans is easily one of the Super Bowl favorites right now. They have road victories upon road victories, which Usually, New Orleans isn't known for. They've gone into cold places in one. They've defended home turf. They could do a little bit of everything. You catch them at home. Drew Brees isn't going to slow down. Michael Thomas is a monster. They've now tried to take Brandon Marshall off the heap 
and turn him into something, even though, unfortunately for Dez, he got hurt. I made fun of him a little on the live uh, live show, but it is sad that he got hurt with his Achilles. But Brandon Marshall's a big target. He's going to fill the same exact role they wanted Dez to fill, more than likely when they're near the goal line, another weapon with Michael Thomas. Alvin Kamara's a monster. This is just going to work out too well. New Orleans minus eight at home is low. Sorry, I think the Eagles get embarrassed. And my Jets have a bye. Thankfully, mercifully, they have a bye. And I don't have to pick them this week. More than likely would have had to pick against them. It's really nice not ha- not to have to do that. But they're bad. They're really bad. Don't know why Todd Bowles has a job still. Don't know why Jeremy Bates has a job still. And I really like Mike McCagnin. But if he figures out a way to keep either of those guys, he's got to go. All right, so run down my picks. Got Pittsburgh minus 5, Chargers minus 7, Saints minus 8. No Jets pick this week. And that's going to wrap up this version of the Sports Opinions Podcast. NFL Week 11 picks against the spread with picks from the Million Lira Man. He was not with me today. But if you want to go follow him at Million Lira Man on Twitter, you want to buy from this guy. You want to pick up his packages. He picks winners. He creates money for a lot of people and he puts himself into this he bets himself so he's not just sitting there giving you empty bets definitely go follow million lira man and buy some of his packages buy one 35 hours for one day it's all you need is one day to see just how good he is and he'll win you some money if you put some money down i am alex cuesta host of the sports opinions podcast find me on Twitter and Instagram at underscore Questa30. Find Sports Opinions on Twitter at Sports Opinion30. Instagram Sports Opinions30. Visit the Facebook page, and I'm going to give you the rundown. I haven't done it in a while. Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, Google Play Music, Apple Podcast, Stitcher Now, TuneIn Radio, um, Spreaker, YouTube. Those are all the places that. You can find me. I don't know if I'm leaving one out, but those are all the places you can find me. You can find the Sports Opinions podcast and all the great guests like the guys that we had on the past, Kevin Malice, and just some other great guests that I've had on, Brandon Scoopy Robinson, Oliver Maroney, and any of my friends and family that I've been on. This is for everyone. This is just for sports fans, not just for sports guys. Matt Santos, my brother David Cuesta, Rob Planter, fairly Dickinson football player. There's just so many people I've had on. And I want to thank everyone. I always do. And if you want to come on, get in contact with me somehow. But again, Sports Opinions Podcast, Week 11 Picks Against the Spread for the NFL. Everyone, happy gambling, happy betting, happy football. Have a good one.